in the headlines. One killed, many injured in Sokoto protest as Governor Tambol imposes 24-hour restriction. Terrorists release pregnant passenger abducted in Kaduna Abuja train attack. Vice President Yoshibajo Wu's delegate in Jigawa not received by state governor. Suspect of New York supermarket shooting arraigned. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I'm Zainab Bala. Hello and welcome. At least one person was killed and many others injured Saturday as police quelled violence that erupted after a mob seized a protest in Sokoto in demand for release of suspects arrested in connection with the lynching of a student of Sheo Shagari College of Education, Sokoto. They were a summer over blasphemy against Prophet Muhammad. Reports say security operatives have been drafted at strategic places to maintain peace and order and they were led by the commissioner of police in the state, Kamal Okunlola. Teams of policemen were also, being uh, were also seen guarding religious places and other important places in the metropolis, with shops around Amadebeloe and other parts of the state closed down. Meanwhile, the Catholic Archbishop of Sokoto, Bishop Matthew Hassan Kuka, on Saturday night debunked rumors that his house was raised by the protesters. Speaking to the cable, the cleric said the social media rumor was not true. The Sokoto State Governor Amin Wazir Tambul has declared a 24-hour curfew to contain tension by protesting residents, demanding the release of the two persons involved in the killing of Deborah Samuel over alleged blasphemy. This is coming shortly after some streets in the protest burnt tires and stoned the palace of Sultan of Sokoto, Saad Abu Bakar III, for condemning the killing of Deborah. Nana Mohammed has the details of this report. <laughs> There was tension in some parts of Sokoto State due to protest over the arrest of suspects involved in killing of Deborah Samuel, a student of Shehu Shagari College of Education Sokoto by her schoolmates. The angry protesters, including young men and women, stormed the palace of the Sultan of Sokoto, Al Haji Saad Abu Bakr, and the state government's house, calling for the release of the two suspected killers of Deborah Samuel. They stormed the Sultan of Sokoto, Al Haji Saad Abu Bakr's palace, for joining President Muhammad Buhari, Vice President Yemi Osibajo, and Governor Amin Waziri Tambual of Sokoto in condemning the killing and calling for the arrest of the suspected killers of Deborah. To contain the situation in the state, Governor Amin Waziri Tambual declared a 24 hour curfew. I hear my curfew within the metropolis of Soho Township for the next 24 hours. I appeal to the good people of Soho State to kindly continue to observe law and order and calm down the restiveness that is currently pervading in the metropolis and that everyone Please, in the interest of peace, go back home and observe these measures with a view of establishment of peace, law and order in the state. Nana Muhammad, Trust TV News, Abuja. Meanwhile, the Kaduna state government has banned protests related to religious activities throughout the state with immediate effect. A statement by the State Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs said the ban followed intelligence that some people were planning to organize series of for and against protests related to a security development in one of the northern Nigerian states. The state no statement noted that the government, Governor Nasri Arufai, after a security briefing on the development, charged security agencies to ensure strict enforcement of the ban against any form of religious protest in the state. The governor also called on religious, community and traditional rulers in the state to complement the efforts of government and security agencies towards the maintenance of peace and stability in the state by prevailing on their subjects to toe the path of peace. 
Now, suspected terrorists who bombed the Abuja Kaduna train and abducted schools have released a pregnant passenger. In a video released by the abductors, the freed woman is heard calling on the federal government to negotiate with the terrorists to save the lives of others who are still in captivity. Security sources said no ransom was paid to secure her release and dismissed media reports that one woman had given birth in the den of the terrorists. I am one of the passengers abducted some days back. They kidnapped us and took us into the bush without stating their reasons. They look at situations of captives like me, who is heavily pregnant and whose prolonged stay may pose danger to my health and decided to release me. I am calling on the government to have mercy on these people, the way they have mercy on us. Government should consider the plight of people in captivity, to sit with them and listen to their demands. Government should negotiate with them peacefully and accept their demands so that those who are still with them can be released and reunited with their families and loved ones. Elsewhere, unknown gunmen on Saturday evening ambushed police convoy at Idema Otua Bagu Road, Ogbea local government area of Bayelsa State, while returning from a colleague's burial at Imago Kubo River State, killing one officer and four civilians, while others were critically injured. Reports say the policemen and civilians were returning from the burial of a police officer identified as late ASB Gilbert Sampson when the unfortunate incident happened. Police spokesman in Bielsa State, SP Asim Buswat, who confirmed the incident in a statement on Sunday, said the commissioner of police in Bielsa State has ordered for a manhunt for the gunmen who perpetrated the dastardly act, while investigation is ongoing to unravel those behind the attack. Governor of Anambra State, Charles Soludo, on Friday visited Namdi Kanu, leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, in detention. The governor, who posted pictures of the meeting on his Facebook page on sun Saturday, said they discussed the sit-at-home protest and killing in the southeast. He assured that if the opportunity arises, he will be glad to personally broadcast to his followers to maintain the peace. Soludo had, in April 2022, called on the federal government to speed up the trial of Kanu so he may be convicted or freed instead of being kept in indefinite detention. Kanu stand in trial on a 15-count charge bordering on treasonable felony, eight of which were recently struck out by a federal high court in Abuja. Vice President Yemiyoshi Bajo on Saturday stormed Duse, the Jigar state capital, as part of ongoing consultations with delegates of the ruling All Progressive Congress ahead of the forthcoming primaries of the party. The VP, who arrived the state at 3 p.m. aboard presidential aircraft, was met by officials of the state chapter of the party. However, neither Governor Mohamed Baderu Abubakar of the state nor his deputy, Omar Namadi, was on ground to receive the vice president. But it was represented by the Secretary to the State Government, Abdul Qadir Fanini. Moving on, national leader of the All Progressive Congress, APC Asiwaji Bola Tinubu, says he remains the best of all the aspirants for the nation's presidency. Tinubu said this when he met with delegates in Niger State to have the party's presidential primaries. Tinubu said, unlike the other aspirants, he, was produced, he has produced many other leaders who are doing well on their own. He said he will replicate the development strides witnessed in Lagos if he becomes the nation's number one man.
The All Progressive Congress, APC in Kano State, has been hit by a wave of defections as political activities heat up. The latest politician to dump the party is the former chief of staff to Governor Abdullahi Ganduji, Ali Makola, who was until Friday the chief of staff to Governor Abdullahi Ganduji of Kano State. He dumped the APC for the new Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, the report. It is not the best of times for the ruling APC in Kano State, as prominent members in its ranks defect to the new Nigerian People's Party, NNPP, to realize their political ambitions. Former Minority Whip in the House of Representatives and former Senior Special Assistant to the President on National Assembly Matters, Kau Sumaila, is among those joining NNPP from the APC. We left our party APC, which we formed in 2013, because we believe that APC breached the understanding, the underlying understanding between Nigeria and APC. We believe that we will form a party that will promote democracy, that will promote good governance. At the end, was a drill from the founding principle of our party. Therefore, we decide to change. How optimistic are you that this new party that you are in will... We are all human. We are all human. You cannot tell what will happen tomorrow. But from the reality, uh, I think it is the amalgamation of like minds. We have very common interest, uh, Nigeria. So far, two serving members of the House of Representatives, Chief of Staff to the Governor, among several other politicians, joined NNPP, a party not well known until recently when former Kanu State Governor Rabi Konkosu defected to it with his supporters. You're watching Trust TV News Update coming up. Road users decry accidents due to dilapidation. Details of this after the break. Do stay. Daily, we bring you updates around politics. People like you who are very young, you have no future. Anybody now who is 30 years, if what is happening to them continues, by the time you are 60, you will have no country. The DPO of a particular unit does not have to wait until the commissioner tells him what to do within his jurisdiction. We have political parties on the ground. Some of them have been there for years. Mm. But they themselves, in their own sober moments, mm. they know that this country is not the one they're expecting to run. Policy and governance. Are you saying well, the NBS what? is lying? I'm saying to you very clearly mm. that the NBS has a serious problem with accurate data till today. The fifth assembly, as well as the seventh assembly, uh, they are unattempted, we are unproductive. Emergence of the Taliban has simply emboldened terror groups globally. There is a lot of attention with regards to security developments in Nigeria. On daily politics, we interrogate issues, holding the actors to account, bearing in mind all the sides. We heard that in some places now, people have to go and pay tax, not to the local government, not to the state but to criminals. Nobody can come to your house and kidnap you without information. If this country is bleeding, it is bleeding because we have failed to educate our young. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, this is Trust TV News Update and Top Stories. One person has been killed, many injured in Sokoto protest as Governor Tambor imposes 24-hour restriction. Vice President Yemiyoshi Bajo Saturday stormed Jiga State ahead of the forthcoming primaries of the party. Still ahead, the Northern Consensus Movement has expressed displeasure over the assumption that most bandit and kidnap-related offences are perpetrated by men of Fulani extraction. President of the movement, Awal Aliyu, made this known at a press briefing in Abuja to address the misconceptions often held against the Fulanis. Aliyu explained that it is unacceptable for the Fulanis to be profiled based on the misdeeds of a few bad eggs, adding that many of them have also fallen victim to the atrocities of the criminals.
Fulanis are the ones doing cattle wrestling, the Fulanis, Fulanis are the bandits. Yes, you will have some of the Fulanis being part of this, but it's not only Fulanis that are involved in all these things. You have the Hausas, you have the all other tribe in Nigeria that are involved, a lot of arrests that have been made, you discover that uh, where they said it's Fulani, you discover that there's not Fulani, but that is not to say that, uh, like I said, that the Fulanis are not involved. The Fulanis themselves are being kidnapped by the bad eggs among them. So it is not every Fulani. When you have over 40 million Fulanis, and out of the 40 million, if you have about 500,000 or a million involved in this uh, kidnappings and banditry and what have you, how can you be just be so unfair to about 39 million when you have maybe 1 million uh, that are involved? Students of Namdi Azikiwe University have expressed sadness over the extension of the industrial action by the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, for another 12 weeks. ASU had extended their strike action by three months following the federal government's failure to meet its demands. They said they were tired of staying at home and appealed to both the federal government and ASU to reach a compromise to enable students to return to school. Addressing the students, the chairman of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, the number of states, Steph Ifiaro, advised the youths to vote a candidate who prioritizes education. A teacher cannot teach why he or she is hungry. So if I'm a teacher, I still need the money. So we students saying that actually I know it's, I don't like it because we're not actually learning. But on the teachers, they actually need money. Okay, let's assume that our parents are teachers. They need money to give us to pay our school fees. So I pray, I, I pray, and I also wish that the money should be paid to them. All the plan that we have about school, talking about, talking about how the last year we were rushed to be able to complete the semester because of the effect of COVID. Coming to this time, taking that uh, we'll be able to excel well within that, uh, within that, uh, within this period, we now met another strike. It's so bad on us. I'm in 200 level actually. So many of us, we have my friends that are in state university. Many of them are in already in second semester, already finishing the semester already. So, but us, we have never done anything. It was three months now. And um, our political class are busy picking a mission for the 2020 election. That shows the level of insensitivity to the plight of our young ones who are at home and in the streets in that direction. We cannot guarantee anybody becoming president tomorrow that will think about the masses until the masses begin to speak out and demand for their rights. You see, you remember the NSAS protests, what it did in this country? So we are leaders that work from slumber and begin to think of what to do about the youths. Among all the contestants, you cannot vouch for anybody. When they, they can promise you having a hell, tell you that they will do this, do that. When they get into power, you forget about those promises. And another round of election comes again. So I don't think we should cast our hope on these politicians. All we need to do is to organize ourselves as of this country and mobilize ourselves to demand for our rights. The Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAM, conducted the 2022 Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination for Blind Candidates at the JOS Centre. The exercise, which is called JAM Equal Opportunity Group, was conducted at 11 centres across the country with over 380 blind candidates sitting for the exams this year. The JOS Centre coordinator of the special exercise, Professor Nasser Maitorari, said 14 candidates sat for the exercise at the JOS Centre adding that the JAM Equal Opportunity Group was aimed at giving the visually impaired people equal opportunity to pursue their academic dreams. One of the candidates, Moses Ofashima, who hails from Benue State, appreciated the leadership of the JAM for finding it worthy to organize the special JAM exercise for them, saying such efforts had given them a sense of belonging. The exercise had been hugely successful. Uh, we conducted the exercise you know, smoothly from arrival, you know, to the conduct of the examination and also the administration, you know, of the questions. Uh, everything had gone on very smoothly because 
there have been uh, you know, uh, quite a lot of uh, pl planning had taken place. Uh, 40 students participated in this voluntary examination. And they come from you know, uh, different states, okay. from Plato, from Benue, from Kadu. Well, things like this should be encouraged in Nigeria. Because for the past years, JAM has proven that we still have institutions in the country that can effectively manage things. JAM have continuously improved on their processes of carrying people along, making sure that education reach all facets of life. And we thank God for that. If other centers too, mm. they have witnessed the same success and the kind of awesome treatment they have had in your center. The Kazena Kano Road was constructed some decades ago. Since then, it has not been rehabilitated in spite of its dilapidated nature. Motorists plying the road had their hopes raised upon commencement of rehabilitation and dualization of about 200 kilometer road sometime in 2014. The contract, which is awarded with work starting from the Kano end of the road, is being supervised by the Federal Minister of Works and Housing. Adilah Yawadi takes a look at the current state of the road project and now reports. The Katana to Kano Road is one of the major federal roads linking Katana with the rest of the country. This makes it an important contributor to the socio-economic development of not just the two states, but northern Nigeria as a whole. Beyond Nigeria, this road is one of the major routes to other African countries such as Niger, Algeria, Libya, Mali, and Mauritania, among others. From Sanyawa in Kano State to Katana, the proposed terminal point of the road, the construction firm has done little or nothing so far to complete the project. The road is very bad. See, I have a flat tire due to potholes. It is really pathetic. We will be happy if this road is completed, but unfortunately it has been abandoned. The construction firm is alleged to have abandoned the road for a month now as work has totally come to a standstill with staff out of sight at both ends of the road. Accidents along this road are daily occurrences as several lives and property worth hundreds of millions of naira are lost to crashes. I don't know why the road project was abandoned. Some people say the construction firm had a disagreement with the government over compensation. Whatever it is, we are appealing to the federal government to come to our aid and complete the project before the expiration of the tenure of President Muhammad Buhari in 2023. Road users are questioning the capacity of the contractor to deliver on the job following what they term sudden disappearance of workers, a situation they said has compounded their woes. On the road but yet the road is not complete there are some places which they start working and uh, they even uh, carry even their uh, equipment we don't know where they are located again during its public outcry on the state of the road recently the Kazna elders forum threatened to report the matter to President Muhammad Buhari if nothing is done by the construction company. We are awaiting the minister's response because I'm sure he must have received our message. If we are giving him time, if by say next month we don't hear anything from him, then we we'll go back to Mr. President and report him because he's supposed to finish this job. The money is there. I don't know why Katsina Kano Road, Mr. President's state, and the minister is uh, joking with the, uh, the, constru the, the, the construction. Observers say if by the end of the tenure of the Muhammad Buhari-led federal government, the Katsuna Kano Road is not completed, 
because the people will be left with no option than to feel abandoned and marginalized. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Crossed Television News, Kazana. And on the foreign scene, an 18-year-old white man has shot dead 10 people in a black neighborhood of New York State in what authorities are calling a racially motivated attack. The man named as Peyton Gentron in court papers was arrested after a standoff at the scene, a supermarket in the city of Buffalo. 18-year-old Peyton Gentron of Cockling is arraigned in city court in downtown Buffalo wearing a mask, paper gown and surrounded by police officers. He's charged in connection with the shooting deaths of 10 people in a top supermarket, which also left three others injured. The suspect entered the store on Saturday afternoon before opening fire. He, he live-streamed the attack online. U.S. President Joe Biden condemned what he called an abhorrent act. And in sports, the 2022 five-star Premier League will feature 16 teams from Abuja, Ibadan and Lagos as they compete in the five-a-side grassroots football competition. With the draws conducted in Abuja to pitch teams together, a seminar was also organized to sensitize Nigerians on the development of grassroots football, tagged growth and profitability of grassroots football in Nigeria and beyond. Adini Ajishafe has the details. Speaking at the event, Chief Operating Officer of Nationwide League One, Shola Ogunsonwo, says NLO is correcting the anomalies in the area of officiating in the tall tier league by releasing names of airing referees in the league and making sure officiating becomes better. We have 774 local government in Nigeria. If you have two, two mini stadia in this stadia, then it will be good enough for the grassroots football to develop more. Then we go into area of technicals where the Nigeria Football Federation is doing all it could to train coaches. These coaches are the ones that will bring out these players, bring out the best to them, identify talents. We keep appealing to them that they should please study the laws of the game very well and officiate according to the laws of the game and take away bias. Last season's most valuable player, Marcos Adekunle of Suicide FC, received an award. A type Jamal of TOFC won the top scorer with 13 goals as Henry Ndubuzi won best goalkeeper. Five star Premier League is played by five players per team tagged five aside to create competitiveness and a platform for footballers to show their football skills. Malagan director of Five Star Premier League, Olumide Aturu, while appreciating the media for promoting the league, says the competition has developed to the level of getting invitation to futsal competition abroad, adding that players are joining foreign leagues from grassroots Five Star Premier League. Grassroots, I know for sure, is the bedrock of any success story. Look at the ANHOs, the NDDs, that's where they started, the Mekelobi, Okocha, Ronaldo. So, if we focus more on grassroots, there's nothing stopping the, you know, emphatic development. Just not long ago, we got an invitation from an international world futsal body, you know, to bring our players, you know, all expense paid trip and everything. So these are the things that, these are the kind of progress that we look forward to see. And then it's happening right in front of our eyes. And I believe that. That's Sport News. I am Adeni Ajishafe. Well, there you go on news update. I'm Zainab Bella. Thank you so much for watching.